So editing Brad here, just so you know, in this video, in the first bit of it, you're going to see that my head's cut off. I did not realize that I was not fully in frame, but it does um, fully put me back in a little bit down the way. So be patient with me and still enjoy the video. So we'll talk to you then. Hey guys, how's it going? So today we're gonna to be building a fern table. Now, this is new to me. I actually just seen this on YouTube by a um, another channel called the Hardy Fern Society. They just built one and I was totally inspired, um, which really is kind of cool because I just received in from Monrovia Plants two out of um, their new Jurassic line of ferns. This is Jurassic T-Rex wood fern. This guy's gonna get about 36 by 36 inches tall and wide. So this is a big one, very upright, uh, growing leaves. It's really nice and sturdy. These do like to be in park sun, the shade, evenly moist conditions. And then this one right here is their Jurassic periodactyl eared lady fern. Such a beautiful fern. She's got a, like a, a minty olive kind of combination going on. And as the new fronds come up, they're showing some purple. And there's purple veining right here and along the stems. Uh, this one as well does like part shade to shade, evenly moist conditions. And it has more of a draping effect and it gets about 18 by 18. So thank you to Monrovia for sending these out. And I thought, what a cool way to display these ferns um, in my garden in a different way that wasn't directly in the ground. So like I said, this isn't my idea. I got this from the Hardy Fern Society. So I'm gonna do my own little interpretation of it. I actually built this table just yesterday. It's made out of slate on top and then some scrap wood we had around. And there's a few things that you're gonna need in order to get started. So let's dive right into that. So to get started on our fern table, you're going to need to make a surround in order to put your soil in the middle. You're basically using a big soil block, essentially, if you've ever heard of those. So you might want to be using driftwood, large um, pieces of you know, wood that you might be having, you know, hanging around. This is going to start the process of framing out our table in order to keep that soil in. So I went and grabbed a few pieces already that I had hanging around. I kind of like this because it's going to be like a branch just hanging out in the woods. And then I have this really sweet hollow piece that I think would be kind of cool to tuck in a few plants right into this. So um, I kind of want to elevate this so I can take advantage of that pocket here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some rocks here. And I think I want to do a pocket over here as well for a plant. Um, we'll kind of see how this plays out. So I've got this big rock right here. And like I said, the main thing with this is to contain the soil. So I'm just going to kind of play around with different heights here. A little too dramatic for that. So because my display is going to be um, just these sides, I'm going to just build a straight wall back here. There's not going to be much going on, so um, keep that in mind. If this is something you're going to be walking around, um, you want to make sure that your display is looking good from all sides. So I'm just going to put a couple flat stones back here just to contain my soil again. about getting it kind of just right here. Now don't worry about getting all of your nooks and crannies um, filled in just yet. 
because we're going to take advantage of those and place some stuff in the nooks and crannies. Now, there is some overhang here. I could bring this back a little bit, um, but if it's not gonna be in a high traffic area, there's really no use, you know, worry about that. So we've got a planting pocket here. We're gonna create something over here in the meantime as well. Just play around. Whatever feels organic to you is gonna be your best bet. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add in a regular potting mix here. This is um, a planter's mix from my local garden center. It is um, almost peat free. They are working to fully go peat free. Um, this has a lot of wood fibers in it. So that's gonna help keep the moisture in better than peat. And it will um, also, uh, This will also get saturated a lot easier as well. So just go ahead and dump this in. I'm sorry if my microphone is making noise right now. It's also a very breezy day today, so I'm trying to keep my uh, microphone under my, my, my uh, shirt here so you don't hear all that as well. Okay, so we've got a little bit of soil here. Just kind of plugging up some hole here. Um, so I'm gonna make a divot here because the first plant I'm gonna use is this Monrovia Jurassic fern. This is the Jurassic T-Rex wood fern. She is beautiful. Um, I want to be delicate because I don't want to break out any new fronds that are coming up. Um, just go ahead and clear up anything that you don't like. It's not a big deal. Ferns are really forgiving. They will put out a couple new leaves for you extra during the season. We'll go ahead and flip that upside down here. Um, you can, based on your root ball, um, you can go ahead and knock off some of the soil if you don't need all of this. Um, if you're working in a shallower section, their soil is pretty much consistent to what I'm using here. So I'm just gonna break off a little bit so that we can work um, and play as we go. So I think that's pretty good. I don't wanna take too much off. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put this at a slight angle down so that the soil is gonna run right into here. So I'm gonna bring up some of that soil that I've already got in here. I'm gonna mix a little bit in. And I'm gonna plant this in this pocket here for now, just so we keep the ferns relatively moist while we work. But you know what? I know exactly what's gonna go right here in this pocket as an under layer. So ironically, this is not a part of the Jurassic line, but this is a new introduction for this year. Monrovia does sell it. It is called Dryopteris Wallichiani. Bear with me. It's called Jurassic Gold. Now, this says it can handle full sun to part shade. Um, it's an alpine fern, wood fern. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily put it in full sun unless you have really consistent moisture and this is a six to nine i believe zone six to nine fern i'm sorry five to nine these ones the wood fern is a i should have mentioned that zones five to eight so these are relatively hardy they could overwinter as long as you're a couple of zones warmer than that um, but I thought this was so cool when I saw it and I thought, well, we're doing a Jurassic uh, kind of theme here. Why not go with a Jurassic goal? And it was on my list to get this year. Again, just breaking off some of that soil. You don't have to keep that. Um, ferns are generally not very deep rooted. That I'm gonna nestle that right over here. I might have to come around front. So again, I'm gonna nestle this one at an angle and 
tuck that in there. Oh, I love that. Oh, I love that. That looks so, got a pocket here. This doesn't just have to be about ferns. You're essentially creating a woodland effect. Now you might want to, as you're getting into this, you might have to build up your sections a little bit more to retain that, that soil. Um, and we'll plug up those in a little bit once I show you. But how about some dwarf hostas? I think that'd be kind of cool. I've got a pot over here of a little bit of a collection that I have. You can go chartreuse. Since this is gonna go into a park shade section, I think the chartreuse will pop. There's variegated ones. Um, kind of just looking. I think I'm gonna, how much space do we have here? Decent amount. I'm gonna go ahead and pluck this baby up. Now I don't know the variety of this one. I'm sorry, my tags got messed up over the winter as I was overwintering them in the garage uh, because they were in containers. And I just like to be a little nicer to them. But I'm gonna go ahead and just tuck that in here. Oh, look at that. Would you look at it? <laughs> so I'm gonna come in from behind here and I'm gonna go ahead and push some of that soil down just to make sure that it's very well coated. I don't want these to go dry because this is gonna be a little bit more maintenance intensive because you're gonna to have to make sure this really stays moist because it's gonna be, um, you know, in a different situation rather than a pot. So let's get the next big boy in. So again, this is the Jurassic Periodactyl Lady Ear Fern. Lady Ear Fern? Eared Lady Fern, I'm sorry. Um, this is gonna get about 18 by 18, like I said. Part sun to shade, does really, really well. And it is a zone, let's just double check here. It is a zone six through nine fern. So if any of these are not hardy for you, you can always pick them up, put them down in the basement. Um, just go back a little bit on the watering to get them through the winter and then they will be fine through the season and then you can bring them right back out um, in their pot and water as well. Okay, I probably didn't even need to do that. I probably didn't need to take off that much soil. So um, let's go ahead and bring this back. And just use what we got here. We got this branch here. If it interferes with your design or it's not looking right, just go ahead and take it out. Um, I'm gonna try to work with it though. I don't think it's kind of cool. And I might even add another branch or two into this to really get that look that I'm going for. This side out. So the next area I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work on this trough area. I'm gonna to have to find something here to stop the soil from coming out. Um, I'm just gonna stick that rock right there. So I'm gonna go in here and just layer in some dirt and then we can take out as we need. But we've already got a really good foundation for putting some plants in. So I'm actually gonna use a house plant uh, this is a little Rex begonia that will do good with the um, drying out in between um, waterings. So you can mix it up. It doesn't have to be all perennials, but this is a really pretty begonia to use. I just have it nestled right in here. So I'm gonna be using some Irish moss for this. Now this needs consistent moisture in order to looking good, stay looking good throughout the time. So you're gonna to have to make sure that you keep up on it, but you can also use preserved moss. It's not gonna to tend to keep its green um, 
as you water because of the, I'm assuming it's a dye that's in them. I've never really looked, but um, you can see it's really uh, rooted down, but I'm gonna take some sections off of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut off um, a bit of this root ball to make it easier for me to work with. And then I'm gonna go ahead and cut up through this. It propagates super easy, so don't be worried about it. Um, in fact, this one, they, they've clearly grown quite a bit at the nursery because they are um, a bit crammed in these pots and growing a little weird. But you can find um, Irish moss at your local nurseries pretty easily, I think. Um, I know um, I've seen it at Lowe's before. This is not a plug for them, but I know I just recently saw it. This one I got at my local nursery though. So I'm just gonna lay that here and I'm going to um, lay it on its side so that I have the um, roots facing into the soil and then I'm gonna go ahead and cover it back up with some more um, soil here. Let me take off a little bit more since we have reduced the size of it. So I'm just gonna nestle that in here and this will fill out as time goes. So it's not gonna be exactly perfect from the get-go. Just make sure it's really in there. Okay, and then we'll put this off to the side for when we need it. So in this area, I'm thinking I've got another bit of that ho same hosta that I could tuck in here. Um, let's get some soil in there first. And then we can decide what we're going to do here. Um, I've got some Hakana Kloa back here and plugs. You could take some divisions of your own or you could buy a plant and divide down. They divide pretty well. Um, but I'm going to tuck that in here, I think. And I'm going to tuck it towards the wood a bit so that it's wicking the uh, moisture from back at the bottom. Add a little bit more soil in there. Make sure it's really in contact because you don't want this to dry out easily, even though you're going to be checking it daily. Um, just want to make sure that it's in full contact there. So that's kind of cool. I think I'm going to go ahead and tuck in some of my stuff up front. And then we'll see where we're at with that one. This is a creeping wire vine. This is Mullion, Mullion Beckia Nana. Um, it's from Little Prince Nursery. It's a zone six to nine. It gets two to four inches tall and about 24 to 30 inches wide. Um, I'm going to flip go this one and I'm going to divide it up because I think I'm going to tuck it right in here next to that Jurassic Gold Fern. All right, so I cleaved off a little bit from the, the start there, the plant there, um, and I'm just going to go ahead and nestle this in. Now, I do want to mention there is a, um, a the, this perennial variety and then there is a annual variety so make sure if you're trying to get the perennial variety that you get the right type again this is mullium beckia nana um, i had this in the past i know um, of one source this came from little prince nursery all right so as you can see i have this hole here um, that i'm gonna have to get plugged so i i tucked in a little bit of the wire vine here really hoping this will take. Um, I've never really divided this plant before, so I'm not um, too familiar with just how much root they need it. It looked like a full pot, we'll see. Um, but I'm gonna tuck this piece of moss right in here, I hope, and kind of plug up this section. Right, that looks pretty good. Um, so we've got some areas that we can tuck a few more plants in. I think I'm gonna add another Aconocloa over here.
in the end, that um, Toad Lily is not going to be able to fit back here. Um, it's actually well rooted in. It's sending off a bunch of runners. So we'll try to figure out something else that can go back here, possibly. Um, I might just leave it open. I do have um, this begonia. It's a Pegasus begonia that I could maybe nestle in here, but I'm not quite sure I like that. Um, and then I do have this poor little fern who would prefer some better care. I did pick this up off clearance, hoping that I could save it. Um, and I think I've done more damage, but what's the worst that could happen? Let's see. We can smush down the root ball, balls, root balls, if need be. Well, rough to get that one, but let's see if we can't nestle this in here. Um, might have to take this back off. Let's see here. So many, so many good things in here. I don't want to mess up the composition. Might have to take some soil out. It's just the name of the game as you're building this. Let's see if that'll fit now. This is just a lemon button fern, by the way, from the house plant section. Um, nothing too special. It's not a hardy fern, so keep that in mind. Let's see. I'm really struggling with keeping this back on here. That might actually work. Let's refluff my other ferns. We want it all to mingle in really beautifully. And at the end of the season, we'll go ahead and uh, deal with them accordingly. Most likely, this lemon button's just gonna be done for this season. Because I don't do good with ferns inside my home. All right, so we've got a little, couple little pockets that we can play around with, so I'm gonna just speed this up and um, I will check back in with you in a few. All right, so what do we think? Let's go ahead and zoom in here a little bit. This is kind of cool. So now we're gonna go ahead and start doing the finishing touches, which are going to be softening the edges here. And that I'm going to be using preserved moss. Um, so you can find this at your local craft store. You can pick this up at a lot of different places. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and try to get a little more soil on that section. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and with the preserved moss, and we're just gonna essentially use this to help hold back any of the soil that might be showing, um, anything that you didn't tuck in. That way, when you go to water, this does not just become a, a sloppy wood mess. And it's also gonna add some texture to this as well, which I think is super, super cool. This is what they did, um, again, this isn't going to hold its green color the entire time. So keep that in mind if this is what you really like. Um, you also um, may not like all this table showing. It doesn't bother me particularly um, to see it. So, but you can go in and cover up the table as much as you would like to give you that aesthetic if it's not what you want. This is just a slate table. I think I mentioned that. And I really like the look of it. So to each their own. You can tuck up some moss into the planting as well. This is going to help essentially mulch it, keep that moisture around. You may or may not want to uh, water before this, um, but this is going to help just kind of keep the soil from sloshing about and it will uh, just make it easier in the long run. Make sure you're pressing in your soil um, just so you don't have to uh, worry about that sliding out on you as an afterthought. But really tuck that um, moss into the gaps and this is going to help out a lot. 
in between all the areas, any areas that you see that are open that you don't want to see the soil. Um, just tuck in some moss and it's going to soften it up a bit. And then as the plants grow, they're going to, they're going to come through it. It shouldn't be too much of an issue for you. Now, if this is something you think, wow, I want to repeat this again next year. I love the setup. You could go ahead and glue all of this stuff down. Um, personally, I wouldn't because you just never know what kind of plant you're going to end up with. Um, the following year or how big things have grown um, that you might be reusing from the garden so just keep that in mind as well all right so i think that should wrap it up you could also go in and embellish it a little bit more with some decorative pieces such as other sticks. I actually found this one. I thought this was really pretty. It's got lichens in it, but you're not going to see that. Um, but I was thinking maybe tucking that in right here in the back and having it come up and over through the display, kind of creating that. Um, you might have to, depending on the, the situation, you might have to um, like pin this in, wire it in, kind of like a floral display, but you can generally nestle it in pretty well. Just go back through and fluff your ferns back out so you can see those and that there looks like it's been there for a while. That looks cool. That looks super, super cool. Oh my gosh, I love it. Okay, so last thing to do, get it watered. I'm going to take you in to kind of show you everything here in detail. So this is the lemon button fern. This is some Hakana Chloa grass that I had plugs of. This is the Jurassic T. Rex wood fern. Really like that. Check out those, uh, the spores on the back. I mean, they look like octopus uh, suction cups. How cool is that? Um, another Hakana Chloa grass, some moss tucked in. There's a wire vine back here, moss tucked in. This is the Jurassic Gold, some wire vine back here, Irish moss, the dwarf. This is a, just a gold variety of a dwarf hosta. I'm not quite sure. Another little bit of wire vine here. This is the pterodactyl eared lady fern. Um, and then uh, while I have it here, look at the prettiness of that. It's purple. It's like a good plum color. And it shows up in all of the, uh, the stems as well. And then we have the little begonia here, some more Irish moss back here, Hakana Chloa, another little start. And then just because the side will be seen a little bit, I tucked in another little part of that um, hosta as well. So this is how it came out. We had that branch coming up. I did tip off a little bit just to even out the scale of it but how cool is this is this something you would try for your garden to display it now this could be done with uh, the ferns shade plants like this this could be done with alpine plants this could be done with your house plants orchids all that kind of stuff and this is all just stuff that I found in my yard as far as the logs and the, the rocks and then and the branches and then I just went ahead and added in my ferns and my other plants just like that and it's that simple. So I hope you have enjoyed this entire process because I think this came out super super cool. I'm going to put this in a part sun location so that I can see it when I come out the door um, and hopefully it'll color up and then we will circle back and do a um, update on this to show you guys how well it's going kind of what my thoughts are on the process of maintenance and see if I would do this again right now totally would do it again I think this is freaking cool I think this is a totally different way definitely a conversation piece um, I wouldn't suggest doing this in your house unless you have a basin type of setup um, which could be done you could have something made we're not getting that crazy this is going to be a water um, outside type of situation and then we will tuck these guys into the garden um, in fall as long as I maintain the water and they live so um, as far as fertilizer goes you could do a slow release I would suggest that um, a very low because ferns don't necessarily like a lot of fertilizer um, but the other plants can handle that 
Um, just so sprinkle that in before you do any of your top moss or anything like that that you're tucking in and then give it a good water in. Other than that, this should be generally pretty straightforward. Make sure it stays moist um, and water often. Make sure you're using the right uh, type of potting soil. You wanna make sure it's got a good retention in it. You could pick up those crystals that you could add into it like, and they swell up to like a jelly to help retain more moisture and so yeah. just to sum it up, yes, Monrovia did send these out to me. There are a number of other um, ferns they have in their Jurassic series that um, they're different hardiness, so be warned of that. These ones are hardy for me. I believe there's one more that's hardy for me as well, um, but unfortunately that one wasn't available at this time, so we'll be on the lookout for it. But if you go on their website and you type in Jurassic, you're gonna get all of these guys um, and then some. If you're able to find them local, maybe you can make them into house plants over the season. A lot of them are zone seven or warmer. So there's a fern for everybody to try out. And I just wanna say thank you again to Monrovia for letting me give these guys a try. I definitely am excited to get these into the landscape and that. Uh, later on in the season. I do have one more of each of these, so those are gonna get tucked into the areas that um, I have planned, and we will see you in the next video. Bye.